Not all Chinese were radical, but communist China was able to kill 70 million people. The peaceful majority were irrelevant. So maybe there are 20% of radical Islamists in the world. That leaves 80% moderate, 80% people who do not want to do anything with radicalism. But if September 11th taught us one thing, it took 19 radicals to bring America down, uh, 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 attack the Pentagon, kill almost 3,000 Americans on that day, and bring air travel to a halt. The, the peaceful majority, we had uh, two and a half, 2.3 million Arab Muslims in the United States on that day. The peaceful majority were irrelevant. And that's why when I speak about radicalism, I am talking about the radicals. I'm talking about the Hamas, which is now ISIS 2.0. I'm talking about people who are willing to kill children, kidnap children, rape women, behead people, burn people alive, simply because they don't like them for who they are. The Hamas terrorists didn't stop once to ask a, a, a Jewish uh, mother, are you a lefty or you're a conservative? Do you like Bibi Netanyahu or do you hate Bibi Netanyahu? What do you think about the Palestinian cause? Not one question. They killed them because they were Jewish. That's why people like you and me, Charlie, need to stand up, speak up the truth, throw political correctness in the garbage. No matter how high the price is for us to speak the truth, we have to speak the truth because we need to save the world. Yes, the truth. Yes, we do. So, Brigitte, explain yes. to us some of the details of Islam, of, let's, let's be nice and generous, some of the verses that might get misinterpreted or misapplied, because, or interpreted as the words say, that talk about killing the infidel, killing the Jew. Talk about what the theology itself instructs and how some people use that as a way to invoke terror and death and destruction, massacre and genocide. Fill us in, Brigitte, on some of the details that our audience might not be aware of uh, with, let's just say, theological Islam. Well, I am not a scholar on Islam, but I can tell you anybody that reads the Quran can see the word for themselves. Islam was written in two sections, the book. When Muhammad tried to appeal to, when he received the message that he was supposedly the prophet of Islam, he tried to appeal to the people uh, in his own city. He tried to recruit them, but nobody listened to him. So finally he decided, okay, I'm going to go to the Jews in Medina. I'm going to try to appeal to them. That's why you see a lot of similarity between Judaism and Islam. That's why Jews pray a few times a day, Muslims pray a few times a day. Jews fast on Yom Kippur, Muslims fast on Ramadan. You see a lot of similarities. Islam, the Prophet Muhammad packaged his religion and went to the Jews to recruit them. When they refused him, that's when Islam turned political. That's when uh, all the verses in the Quran that followed started talking about killing the infidel, cutting off their heads, killing, uh, cut off their hands and toes because they disobeyed Allah. That's why there is in Islam a, a, a law called al nasq al mansukh the law of abrogation, meaning that all the previous verses, any new verse erase all the previous verses before it. That's why when people quote you the moderate verses in Islam, they're quoting from the previous era when, when Prophet Muhammad was trying to appeal to the Jews to accept him. Once they didn't, the latest verses of the Quran, which replaced all the previous moderate verses, are called for jihad against the infidel, for killing the infidel, and that's why ISIS and Al-Qaeda and all the radical Islamists, when they get into a debate with a moderate Muslim, they pull out the Quran, they start reading from it, and that's why they always win the debate, because the law is on their side. Brigitte Gabriel, stay right there. But yeah, I mean, hearing all that, let's import more from Hi, Somalia and from the Middle East into our country. It's unbelievable. Act for America, Brigitte, stay right there. We have more after the break. Excellent job. Email us, freedom at charliekirk.com. I want to tell you about Rough Greens, ruffgreens.com. That's 120-LIFE.com. Section to retirement income and extended care. You need a plan. Tune in to Retirement and Income Radio. Hosted by well-known Chicagoland financial educators. Welcome back. Brigitte Gabriel continues with us. So, Brigitte, we have imported millions of Muslims into the country, and it seems as if they are not assimilating. Look at what happens in Minneapolis with the Somali Muslim population. Why is that, Brigitte Gabriel? Why is it that the 
Arab Muslim immigrants to America seem resistant to assimilating to Western values? Well, the world is changing. Remember, the Arabs and Muslims who immigrated from the Middle East prior to 9-1-1, prior to 2001, assimilated just fine. We started see seeing the radicalization of the Islamic world after the Iranian mullahs came to power in 1979. That's when we started seeing a true rise of radical Islamism worldwide. So right now, since 2000, uh, since uh, 2000, we started seeing all the imams that are preachers and mosques in the United States being imported from places like Egypt, like Syria, like Afghanistan, like Pakistan, mm -hmm. who are coming to America and be, being more radical than the generation before them. And so when you end up bringing now big blocks from the Islamic world who did not come here because they were so tired of the corruption in their states, they wanted freedom, they wanted a civilized society, those are the original Muslims who used to immigrate here. Right now, when you import a group of people as refugees because you want to help them and bring them in mass by the tens of thousands, there is no possible way you can assimilate them. And that's why they regroup together. For example, you mentioned the Somali community. We didn't bring them all to Minnesota. We actually scattered them all over the country. They ended up, people who we settled in Tennessee, driving up back up to Minnesota because they heard that's where their clan or their tribe or a bunch of Somalis are, and then they grouped together, and that's where you see a, a radicalism faster, and that's why we had... 42 terrorists from the Somali community in Minnesota go to the Middle East and fight with the radical, with the radical Islamists in the Middle East. Actually, the first American suicide bomber was a Somali American who became a suicide bomber. So uh, it is a problem, and that's why we do not want to import Palestinian refugees into the country. No way in any shape or form. I encourage people to go to our website, Act for america.org act for america.org we have a petition a whole campaign directed to congress right now we do not want one palestinian refugee settled in the united states they destroy everywhere they go they create problems uh, the arabic countries do not want them and we do not want them either go to act for america.org and take action today Brigitte, in all your work of doing this the last couple of decades, what do you think is one of the great misconceptions people have about Islam? Um, you, you, you touched on this a little bit in the first segment, but you say that the peaceful majority is actually not the operative way to look at this, that there's actually a violent, radical minority that then governs the peaceful majority. But even, Brigitte, I look at some of these public approval polls of what actually rank-and-file Muslims believe in certain of these, some of these countries, and it's shocking. What is the one thing that you want our audience to know, the American people to know, that is a, uh, let's just say, a misconception uh, that people have about Islam in America or worldwide? Brigitte Gabriel, about a minute and a half remaining. Again. In all religions, you have uh, people who are radical and you have people who do not adhere to the religion as much. And Islam is the same thing. Those who adhere to Islam, look, we have Americans in America who are members of the Nation of Islam, can't even read Arabic, have never read the Quran in Arabic. They have no idea what the people who adhere to the Islamic Ummah believe. But what you have to understand is Islam by itself is a political doctrine. It's not a religion like Judaism and Christianity. And that that's why majority of the people uh, identify with the Islamic Ummah, the Islamic nation. That's why you see more similarity and, and, and loyalty between a Muslim in Khartoum and a Muslim in America who feels closer to a Muslim in America than he feels to a Christian in Khartoum. And because of the radicalism and the, and the doctrine itself. So while most Muslims are peaceful, the doctrine itself is a violent ideology calling for the killing and and being at war with the non-Muslim land until eternity. Brigitte Gabriel, you always tell it like it is. Uh, plug the website one more time, about 30 seconds. Plug anything you want, 30 seconds remaining. We are in a fight for our survival. This is barbarism versus civilization. This is democracy versus dictatorship. This is evil versus goodness. Go to actforamerica.org, join us, sign up to get our emails and action alerts, and make sure you sign our petition to stop any Palestinians from coming into the country and expel Rashida Flight from Congress. Very good. I love that. Brigitte Gabriel, God bless you. Hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, my friends.